name is uh, Steve Jorgen. Find me in the internet or in Tartu, which is two hours south from here. So come visit, visit my gym as well. It's called Buimla, which means literally the gym. And, and you see other guys from, from my, my place here as well. Um, the class is titled Post Preach Shittism, and actually it ended up being the most uploaded class uh, of the camp. So I'm glad, and I assume I'm not going to teach you. I, I'm not going to teach you preach it because I assume that everybody joining this class already knows some preach it, and you might know that better than I do. And and preach is right here, so you can turn to him with that. But but the thing about giving all credit to Preet in the sense that the work he's done with the defensive postures and kind of small details, how to stay in them, magnificent work. But that's his main focal point of interest. And what I personally consider is that in the recent camps when Preet has been teaching and also in this camp, he, he focuses on his new discoveries in regards to the posture and stuff. And then he shows you the posture, he has you drill the posture, fix his mistakes, but usually it's like, okay, you survive, you survive, survive, and then he says like, and then you go, and then you escape, and, and kind of lets you experiment with that on your own. So I decided like for the, that it would be complementary to that, to focus on at least for an hour on like how to go then, when you go. So, so we're gonna talk a little about uh, how to safely scramble, how to train scrambles, what to keep in mind, kind of, good old principles there are, and, uh, and so, so you can add that to, to your survival skills. Because also, like, if you aren't that well versed in like defensive postures and that stuff, and or if your opponents are either better and or heavier or larger than you are, then even though when you're surviving and you're not getting submitted, uh, it can be still pretty exhausting. And it then depends, or it becomes dependent on who plays smarter. If you play your defense smart, and they're kind of overexerting themselves, it might be that they get more tired, and you get good chances to escape as you top and attack them, right? But if you're kind of in turtling up and, and going into all the hawking positions and that, and the person on top is smart, and they ride you while using their weight, uh, it's gonna be a long day, right? So, so you might want to get out rather sooner than later at occasions. So you need to know how to do that. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay. Um, and I let you direct the class. In essence, if you already know enough like defensive postures from Preet, uh, you have taken them enough, watch these videos, that stuff, possibly subscribe on the Defensive BJJ website. Uh, then pick your own positions from where you want to work from, but I'm going to use them as examples. Uh, or I'm going to take some positions to use examples and then see what the questions are. Uh, so, who wants to be my OK? Uh, OK, come on. It's you're my second best look at after Raul. <laughs> so let's assume uh, like a sideways. I usually I, I forget what he calls them. So so you kind of watch that. In general, like let's say in side mount type situations, after my guard has passed, I can be either facing him or I can be facing away. Right. That's kind of the main thing because I don't want to be flat in on my back in most scenarios. There's very few scenarios. And in general, how I like to teach anyway, or the heuristic I use, is that for a perfect pin, or a perfect pin is a four-point pin, right? So it's like two shoulders, two hips on the ground. I don't ever want to be pinned in four points, be it guard or guard passed or anything. So, so one of my priorities, whether I do defensive posters like specifically or not, take side mode. So this is very, very bad. It's like I'm stuck to the mat here, right? So I might want to get some kind of a specific frame, but what I can also think about is that I want uh, as many points off the ground as possible. Usually that means that I'm looking forward to make two out of four. So that's currently four, and obviously like raising my hips up like that doesn't do much. Occasionally it might in this position, 
but I'm usually looking for kind of, I might do this, okay? That might give me something, or I can start to turn sideways. So, so I'm looking to get points of floor if I end up four points pin. I'd rather not, so if it passes my guard, let's say it passes my guard, I go two points, okay? I'm exposing my back, doing some free shit here, right? Depends on now what he's gonna attack, like let's say he's gonna go for the Kimura or whatever, and fighting the grips here actively, doing the seatbelt stuff, okay? So, and then it's the, then you go time, right? So what I'm looking for when I'm about to escape from those defensive postures, is that I'm looking to create a scramble. And what is a scramble? How I define a scramble situation is that it's a dynamic movement where neither party has a direct advantage over the other via uh, controlling either shoulders or hips or both, okay? Uh, go to the side a little bit, back to the side, so you are already kind of moving around. So let's say he's attacking here. So I might want to turn to turtle because I'm already facing away, right? And I can connect the defensive postures in the sense that if I'm here, I'm kind of playing that position, and if I just turtle, okay? I turtle, face him, pull the elbows in, now I'm in my defensive turtles. But I would have rather escaped somewhere better. Because while this is not a pin anymore, he still can kind of ride me in the sense that he has some control. Obviously, I strip the grips, but he can use his weight to pin my hips a little bit. I'm not very, very mobile here. So, to create a proper scramble, there was a moment of scramble, but I ended up in another like position where he can use his weight to uh, control me at least a little bit. Not like pin me, but ride me. And I would rather not be ridden, okay? So, <clears throat> let's say I'm here. So what I need to pay attention to is that where his weight is at the moment, and, uh, and he's riding my hips. So I want to use some kind of a frame, and this can be multiple. It could be here, for example. It could be the wrist grip, okay? So I'm using, I'm looking for using some kind of a frame to free my hips from that ride. So this is not a pin, it's a ride, he's riding my hips. I'm using the frame to free my hips from the right, and I'm moving my hips as far as possible. So later we're mo looking into moving shoulders away, but now it's about the hips. So if I turn to turtle, it's called running man for a reason, right? So I might use this frame, I run, run, and I move my hips away, right? And now when I turn to turtle, I'm also, I'm wanting to beat him to the speed game, okay? So I'm, I'm using the frame, and now I'm turning, so if he wants to kind of keep riding my hips, he's likely to miss that by some opportunity. So what I'm looking for is that I'm looking, for example, to catch a leg, which I did there. I kind of put an underhook around his leg. So that's what I'm looking for. Um, in creating a scramble, maybe you've heard, but maybe not, or, or maybe it's been a long time. In scramble, there are a few rules to, to win scrambles. You have the rule of higher person wins, okay? Uh, you have the rule of put their weight on their hands, which we also covered in yesterday's class a lot. And you have the rule of lift their legs up, which often goes together with, kind of if you lift somebody's legs up, usually their weight falls onto their hands. Uh, lift their legs up, also known as high ankles win scrambles. Like these are your scrambling rules. Higher person wins, high ankles win scrambles, and make their hands heavy, put the weight on their hands, okay? So, let's say I choose this position. He's the higher person right now. Like there's, I, I can't magically move myself on top of him because he's, he's riding my hips, okay? So I'm taking this scenario that I'm kind of wanting to strip the grips using some kind of a frame. I need to free my hips. I'm moving the hips away, okay? And then I not need to think about like, what are the following rules? Can I do any or multiple of the three? Could I lift his legs? Could I put his weight on his hands? Or could I assume higher ground? Higher ground is advantages, right? So I start to move, I move here. Whoop, here's the leg. Can I get higher ground? No, like his weight is on me. Can I force his weight onto his hands? Okay, maybe. 
and note the higher ground. Okay? So I'm starting to do that, and obviously, if you were here yesterday, whoop, shelf the leg, and you're good to go. Um, so you free your hips, so you won't be ridden anymore, and then you start to look for either taking your head out, which would be assuming higher position, or grabbing a leg and trying to lift it, and or trying to force their weight onto their hands. So it's either one of those three or multiple at the same time. And there's no like techniques for that. Maybe we'll look into some techniques from some positions later today. But what I want you to do first is that start to play with that. Assume some kind of a defensive posture you want to play with today uh, and try to play with at least two, I would say. Uh, pick your two favorite ones or pick your two least favorite ones in the sense that you get stuck in them the most. Uh, and we start to play from there. Uh, have the top person go slow, figure out what's your grip break, what's your frame, and then how you can move to free your hips from the ride, and then think what's your next step to either lift the legs, either assume higher person position, or put their weight on their hands, and see what happens. Can you complete the escape? Any questions? Okay, one, two, three, maybe clap. I don't know. So, and go, experiment. Switch on your own. Okay, um, okay, I'm going to show you one posture or one idea to play with, which, uh, which uh, I haven't done too much, but thus far it seems pretty cool. Let me kind of, okay, uh, come to this side. So, and it's when you're facing them, you can try to, uh, like obviously again, the sooner you, after the pass, assume the posture, the better, right? When your guard is passed. But I can do kind of the reverse posture in the sense that, um, first of all, I can think about doing the scrambling or initiating the scramble after the pass. So, so let's say I'm, I'm here and he passes my card, right? What? Right here, right? So uh, what I need to think about is that, could I do, for example, uh, higher person, okay? If the weight is on me, then probably not. But if the weight is uh, off of me, I could maybe like start to just sit up and try to assume the higher posture, even if he's past my legs, okay? That's one thing, you, you can think about that. Uh, the other thing which happens from facing in side mount is that, can I grab the leg as soon as possible? So if I get my guard passed, can I kind of slide down to grab the leg and be kind of in, in this type of position? You see, I'm still assuming higher ground. I don't want to be squashed here. So I'm on my elbow posted. I have the leg here. And now I need to think about like, can I come to be the higher person? No, obviously not. So what would I need to do to be able to lift his legs and put his uh, weight on his hands? So cannot do much with this hand. So I guess I can only move my arse. So I'm moving, I'm pulling, putting the weight on his hands and then coming out and in the back door to the single leg position. So that's one thing. It's like you grab the leg as soon as possible. You initiate the scramble soon after the pass. But what I wanted to show is that kind of facing him position. Obviously, you can face him and then turn away if facing doesn't work. But here's this type of a posture. So I, let's say he grabs my hip, like Tato grabbed your hip. I can put the underhook, I can move my hip, put the underhook in, and I'm putting it kind of on my own thigh. So like here, I'm putting it here, so it's like a frame, right? And if I can't uh, get any higher, um, I will remove this hand from the play. So it becomes like a, I don't know, like a reverse hawking or something like that. And I learned it from the uh, UK guys, Glyn Powditch and, and his Instagram. So, so he passed it and I'm getting up into, even like I'm getting into this position. I'm like facing this way and this hand is here. So he cannot, like usually he would, might want to run around, but he won't do that because this arm is here and I will catch the leg if they will try to go. Yeah, this is like, yeah, okay. I will glue this knee to their hip. So, and I'm like here, okay. So there's not much, like he cannot properly pin me because my foot is on the ground here. 
And I can now think about like, okay, which way will they go? So if it stays back like this, I can try to shrimp and start to bring this knee in, okay? If they start to block that, so I, I will start to like bring this knee in, then I will go and bump them with this knee and come to this position, okay? So your basic posture is like you assume as soon as possible you tuck this arm in. It's like a straight arm here, and, but it can't be like arm locked because it's against my own body. And the other arm goes away, like I'm turned here, he can't cross face me. And then I either like try to get this knee in, or if they stay back, kind of using that, then I bump them here and start to go for the underhook. So uh, try that, and always if you feel that fails, you can turn away. So kind of turning away and turning towards them always work in conjunction, in my opinion. I, I have my escapes facing him, and I have my escapes turning away, creating scrambles in both directions, okay? So try it, try, try this position and try creating a scramble from facing them. About that posture, a couple of key details. What are important is that I want to glue my ear to my shoulder, like also in most other defensive postures. Because if I turn too soon, I can show it just on my own, like if I put the arm here and I start to turn too soon, my collar, for example, becomes accessible if it's key. Mm, and also, let's say, if I turn and start to put the underhip in too soon, then the dark skin becomes available. So I really want to kind of keep this here to prevent any kind of cross face. And I don't want to like come away too soon. So I'm glued here to prevent crossface and collar attacks. And this is here to prevent the underhook for the Darcy's. Because I don't want to put the underhook here because that's the Darcy game, okay? So what I really want to do <clears throat> is that essentially what a Darcy's or when Darcy's happen is the same positions where the wrestling wizard happens, right? It's an overhook, okay? It's an overhook. So I want to wrestle up from a position where the overhook would be least effective. So come here, um, come to like this side, okay? So here, overhook is very effective. Even if I put like a tight overhook, yeah. Uh, like he can't burst me, but if I come up from here, he can throw me to the ground or kind of go to this choke thing, right? So, and, and he can also like do, do throws or, or like time the throws of my momentum coming up. What I want to do in the bottom is that I want to beat him by postures and timing. That's my only chance, really. And in this position, it's important that I, I, I don't do, like, even if he puts his hand in here, it's kind of like trapped. He cannot feed it through very, very tall, okay? Like, it's, it's kind of hard. And I might be able to, like, obviously I need to combine, like, put this arm, squeeze, squeeze it through like you did. I might be do some funny stuff, okay? But, uh, but that's that. So in general, like it should be hard to put in the underhook. So and I'm here. So so also like he can't cross face me here. You see, it's like hard here. And now, when he's not giving me momentum, I have to create momentum. And that's why the push with the leg is okay. So he's trying to maybe get a better position here, and I'm creating momentum, okay? And now I can use that momentum to use the opening to, to use it to escape, right? So keep in mind, like, don't expose your limbs. It's basically like any defensive posture. You don't want to expose your limbs too soon. Um, okay. The other thing, or actually what I wanted to talk about is the peek out, um, which I see some people try. But if you escape from inferior positions, like their lower positions, you create your momentum, you try to time them, and if they're any good, uh, they will realize that they've lost the hip ride. Okay? So let's take the away position again. It's easiest to demonstrate. Like they will realize that, okay, they've lost the hip ride, and I'm moving my hips away, 
and turning, and then they will try to, uh, like, they might want to follow, okay, they, they might want to follow, but now they're going to sprawl, or try to, like, yeah, they're going to sprawl on you, whoop, here. So you, more than often, you end up in, like, a front headlock type situation. When you, when you actually come up and go for the leg, you try to get higher ground, you try to get the leg, but they will sprawl, they, they know that you're going to attack their legs. And then, to have any success, you need to follow up. I would rather try to escape the front headlock first, as opposed to letting him take turtle top. Okay? If your turtle is very good, you, you might be okay with them sitting on your side turtle, but I would rather uh, escape front headlock if I could make them go to front headlock. So let's take the front headlock position, like you ended up here. Uh, now it depends on the grip. And uh, like it depends on the grip. The most standard grip is that he takes the head and the arm. Important thing to remember is that the moment he goes both hands to the head, uh, like uh, some kind of guillotine variation, okay, uh, then your only option really is to take the higher ground and you do that by reversing because there's nothing stopping me going towards my, my own back. So take any kind of grip on their hands, like they might be trying to choke you or control you here. Like now my best option is to just try to either post on the hand and post on the head and you kind of get your hips up and you try to strip, strip the grip and back out and then immediately, could I lift his legs? No, they're too far. So to win the scramble, I need to be the higher person. So it's whoever uh, jumps on top of the other wins. Since I have the grip here, you see, then I have the chance of becoming the higher person. And I have reversed the game in the sense that it's still a scramble, but now it's him who is fighting from the lower position. And then I can think further like, Okay, I wouldn't want him to escape, <laughs> maybe grab the leg then and force the weight to his hands. Okay, so keep that in mind when he goes uh, both hands onto the neck, be it kind of just like that or any kind of guillotine situation, fight the grips, back out, become the higher person. That's the... become the higher being. Um, okay, so... Uh, let's try that real quick. So, so where do you start? Uh, let's try to do that. Assume your own position. You can even start from, let's say you start from turtle. The same thing applies. I want to create the scramble. Like, and if he does it, that's perfect. But I want to create the scramble. I need to have some kind of a frame. So let's say it's my leg right now. I will free my hips from the scramble a little bit and I will start to grab the leg. And now I'm in front head lock position. If he grabs my throat with both hands, and that's what he does, is that you can immediately relieve the pressure and you can think about kind of backing out. This does do nothing, but strip the grip, keep the grip, assume top, okay? Uh, or you can start from any kind of like facing away, facing towards position, uh, create a scramble, escape, but the person on top, if you lose the hip, try to get front headlock control, just take a grip on the neck. If you have some good neck attacks, you can kind of lock them on, but don't finish them. Like, let them fight the grip and back out, okay? Let's try that. One, two, three, who wants to clap, claps. You're getting it nicely and we need to add it together with other stuff. I, I want to, I don't, I'm going to cover like the front headlock. So, so these are like the two tech or three techniques I'm going to teach. Uh, one was kind of remember that if he goes both arms commits to the neck, you need to back out or the best option is to back out, try to back out because he, he doesn't have really a pulling force. He can't pull your jaw like this, but that's what the grip fighting is for, right? So uh, most standard, how they get uh, the, the other possibility, they go either both hands on the neck, both arms underhook, which rarely happens because that is like the weakest position um, or easiest to defend. Uh, and the most, most common is that they go arm and head, right? Or head and arm. To, to attack chokes, to, to just keep control, whatever. Okay, so let's say I moved and I'm in front of a position and he has the head and arm. And now I need, I need escapes to both sides. 
Uh, the backside still applies in the sense that if I'm able to, like I can see what happens, I can still try to kind of, let's say, come to all fours and see if he stays behind or what does he do, maybe he, I can strip the grip here and start to fight for the higher. If it's head and arm, the backing out still applies if I can. And it's not like a technique technique, I just need to remember that tripod up, see what that does, definitely fight the grips because especially in jiu-jitsu there's always a threat of strangles. Uh, so you need to be mindful about the grips. In general, I would say that if you feel they are going for some kind of a strangle, I need to pay attention to it as soon as I realize it, okay? So, so thinking about escaping while they're strangling, kind of dangerous. If you like to live on the edge, you can of course try. Um, okay, so I have two sides. The position is asymmetrical. He has head and arm. And you have two basic escapes, one on the arm side and one on the head side. Um, since we're currently this way, and you assume the head and arm position. So um, let's do the, uh, this side first, where kind of my, my arm is free and it's kind of connected to my head. Okay, so might be also the more uh, unfamiliar to, to you guys. So what I want to do is that, as I said, danger of uh, strangles is always there, so I need to fight the grips anyway. I want to pull back the other elbow. That's kind of needed because you also know that this, if he kind of gets this off the way, doesn't offer the base, plus there is good chances to start some kind of a strangling attack, either guillotine, anaconda, whatever, okay? So you kind of want this elbow back on the arm side. Uh, yeah, take a grip, okay? So I kind of want this back, and I can also post up one leg, no real threat here. So what I do for this side escape is that I try to strip the grip down. And also, I kind of expose my neck here, but since I strip the grip and the pressure up with my head, it's okay. So this wouldn't be okay, but this kind of fighting down, this is okay. And I can stay here and try to survive that position and see what happens. So, and for the, uh, it's called the short arm drag, what I do is that I switch grips. So this inside arm, elbow is back, I switch the grip to his triceps. I hope everybody sees. So I take like this grip. Mm -hmm. And I can hang here for a little while, but essentially I need to post, or eventually I need to post. So I post, I post, and what I do now is that I drag this across, but my own head is in the way, right? So what I need to do is that if we were like one structure, the silly metaphor I've heard used, I don't remember where I learned it, is that it's like a, it's like a Twix bar or something that you snap in half. So if we are one Twix bar right now, so what you do is that you turn on your knees and you snap it in half. So you kind of and now we're at a 90 degree angle. So that's what you do. So, so you, you're kind of here fighting elbow back. You switch the grips so the elbow back grabs this. And now you need to kind of pivot. You throw the arm around. You throw the arm to your kind of side of your head and you pivot. Whoop. And then you end up in like a, it's, it's, a sh it's called short arm drag for a reason, because it kind of reminds you, most of you know arm drag, so it kind of reminds you of the arm drag coming in. So I'm here, close off the elbow, pull this grip down, you're fighting the choke also, switch the grip, okay? Turn a little bit like this, and now you pivot on your knee, and you throw this arm over him, and the kind of head comes out in the front. Whoa. Mm. Uh, you both, during easy practice, be mindful that you don't headbutt them in, in their jaw uh, when going live and hard. If they're not careful, that's their problem. But right now, pay attention to both of you. So because the A head kind of slips out from the front and you can kind of headbutt them here if you're not careful. Okay? So try the short arm drag. Escape to the head side. Okay? Try that so everybody gets it. Go. talk a little about how to train these scrambles or how to train what to do when you 
want to follow up on preach it. Okay, so so that's that that's the name of the class. Post preach it. What to do? Post that. So uh, you had your arm side. Let's uh, face this way. Um, as I saw in multiple pairs, you already kind of know the peek out or sit out movement. I'm not a real wrestler, so I don't know what's the difference between peek out and sit out. So, so something out. Um, <clears throat> take the front headlock. So it's uh, it's, and I will do all those three pressures in conjunction. If I if I actually start the escape, and if they're any good, I will have to kind of threaten multiple directions because I'm in a disadvantageous position. The only way I can turn it to my advantage is if I confuse him with my movement and then I can gain an advantage on momentum because he has gravity on his side. So I need to kind of be better at timing to beat the gravity advantage. Okay, so I still, let's say I started with that. I kind of want to save myself from the joke. Okay, I'm starting to go here. And what usually happens is that they will kind of, if they know that I'm about to escape with a short arm drag to this side, they are going to lean with their weight into that side. So they kind of go, will, they will go there, try to pull me back. Um, and this is kind of okay. If they try to pull you here, I won't still be able to get it. But what, uh, uh, what really stops me is that if they literally move to this side. So if, if they kind of see that I'm starting to go for that, no, to the other side. Other side, yes, there. Because now if I can't, kind of my head gets stuck here. And they, I can't go straight back. So it's exaggerating, but then this side becomes open. And later with the sit-out, it's going to be vice versa. You threaten the sit-out, they're going to move in that side. You're going to, you can do the short arm drag to the other side. You will try the short arm drag. That doesn't work. You can do the sit-out to the other side. So what's really important in the sit-out is that the main thing, it's not about this movement. So OK, because like you know that it's a sit out and you're focused on that movement. And that's what I saw in people who tried. But the main thing is actually moving in a way that you can get your head out. Because remember the scrambles? I cannot reach their legs. I'm using the front headlock escapes when I, uh, uh, when I can't reach the legs. Because if I can reach the legs, I can think about how do I lift the legs. I can think about takedown attacks. But front headlock without the leg control, I need to do something else, OK? So, so that's the thing. Essentially, we're getting higher, higher person position. So I'm either becoming higher being by moving back, OK? And I'm on top. I'm the higher being. So I'm doing the short arm drag. And again, coming from below to above. And now the underhook side, OK? So now the underhook side. Main thing is getting your head out. And for that, I do as much as needed, but as little or <laughs> as little as possible. So I can step out. And if there is enough space and they're not bigger than me, then I might be able to do just this. And attack the legs, and I'm good to go. OK? Their grip won't save them here anymore. But in most cases, uh, come off your knees as well, like a proper sprawl. And sprawl back. Yes, it's like that. It's like they want to smash you. So I still want to grab maybe this and post or save yourself from the chokes. But now the basic movement is I will go to the other side, to the underhook side. I will post, okay? And now I will do like a, I will elbow over my head. I want to really exaggerate that. It's not like a hitting motion, motion. it's like a circular motion. I throw the elbow over my own head and then I peek my head out. Okay, my shoulder stays connected and as soon as possible I glue my ear to their back and then start to come closer like in wrestling. I glue the ear to the back, now I have some control and then I will beat them to the scramble, whatever ribs I assume. Uh, not very good pedagogically but I will show you the main mistake. So consider avoiding that mistake. And especially it's prevalent in like tall people or taller people is that they kind of fold themselves here. I mean, I don't know anything about being a tall person, but what happens is kind of they, they do this and then they focus on the sit out, not the head and not the arm movement. And then what happens is this. <laughs> and even if you like, let's say I can reach the leg or something, 
they will beat you to the scramble. Move to my back, move to my back. Uh, and maybe you can turtle. And why did I waste so much energy? So what's really important is that to the sit out, there is degrees. I will show you kind of, don't uh, just stay there. The, to the sit out, the minimum is this and come out with your head in synchronicity. That's the minimum. So whoop, whoop, attack the double leg, run them over. That's the minimum. What maximum is, is the kind of the slide we did yesterday. That's the maximum. If, uh, if it's really heavy guy on top of me, the maximum is going to be this. OK, that's the maximum. Everything in between those extremes is OK, depending on the situation. OK, these are the two extremes. You need to pick the slider position accordingly. But in any case, my upper body movement is similar. And what my upper body movement is that I will do the kind of the middle or standard lower body movement, but my upper body movement needs to be that the elbow throws over my head, kind of a, I don't know, like I comb my hair or something. So, so elbow, it's really important, exaggerated movement. And my chest, which is kind of collapsed here, I do exert pressure. And if I do this movement, my chest expands. Okay, my chest expands, back straight, ear glued to their chest, and assume control as soon as possible, okay? The further you go, the longer it's gonna take for you to get your legs under him and follow him, okay? The shorter distance you go, the shorter time it takes to exert pressure towards them. Okay, enough talk, one more time to show. Be back here. Sometimes I might do multiple if I mess up the first time. Let's say I do this. <laughs> That's bad. Okay, back up. Whoop. And if I glue my ear here, they can try to move, move towards my back, but I will beat them to the scramble. If you keep your shoulder and your ear to them, you will beat them to the scramble even if they're bigger. Okay? So, arm movement. Lower body movement according to the slider, like it's going to be dependent on your opponent's size and how much weight they're using on you. Uh, and then pick your sit out. Okay, let's go. Try the sit out, and then we have five minutes to drill. I saw it in the case. That was exactly that. Either escapes only works to that side. I will show you later, but I don't, don't want to hold you up. Arm drag to only arm drag side, sit out only to sit out side. If you're doing no resistance, it might seem that both are viable to either side, but that's not true. So it's one escape per one side, asymmetrical. Okay, continue. Okay, look here, look here, uh, come so you can see. There's confusion about the size, and I need to show uh, why. Uh, Tadu, can I use you? Because I, I need a bigger fin for that, heavier fin. Uh, so, um, like, when we're trying out, it might be confusing, and it might seem they kind of work on both sides, but that's just not true if you're going against anybody good. Assume, like, front headlock position. So if there is the neck here, even if I kind of get the grip here, and I will try to peek out this side, then what happens is that I, my elbow does nothing because it doesn't affect his arm. I might, if I'm kind of good, then I might be able to throw him off balance here for a little bit, but he will beat me to the scramble. Like, I can chase, but he will beat me to that. Like, 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10. That's, that's for sure. And you need to recognize that. So if you go against somebody even drilling light, don't allow them to get away with that. Like just put the weight on top of them and squish, squash and, and all that with them. So, um, so that works only onto, that, uh, only onto the underhook side. <clears throat> Come to this side. Uh, 
So if he assumes front headlock, yeah, take the same, like uh, this way, yes. So, so here you have your arm drag. This is the arm drag side. Where the hand is over the neck, that's the arm drag side, and only that. Um, and the other side, here, and I need to make room for my elbow. Usually I got asked about that, where I, do I want to put my elbow? Ideally, it's the higher I get it, the better, uh, also to defend the chokes. But occasionally, sometimes I don't get it like on the top of his elbow, sometimes it's down here. So here, my elbow will affect his armpit and the head will come out. And now it's my head is glued here and I can use different grips. For example, if he starts to move, I can grab, 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 and I will put him down, like again, uh, with high, high percentage. Okay, that's what I meant. So, uh, I'll introduce the last drill and then take the last questions. It's open mat, so I may, might go over like two minutes, but I don't want to go over more than five. So, um, start from your preferred pre-cheat position, uh, or, or two, maybe two positions, turtle on side, giving up your back, also the same. Create the slow scramble. That's what I told yesterday, like it's you, when training scrambles or training these scramble scenarios, you need to have a good training partner who kind of can go in unison. So it's more like a dance or kata as opposed to, uh, as opposed to like a fighting or drilling scenario. But the difference is that still different things can happen. For example, uh, and, and then I need to follow up. So for example, uh, come on, so let's take like a side hawking something something position so he kind of can try to get some kind of slow grips here maybe he will try to do a kimura i can go this back okay i will kind of try the kimura stuff strip it and now i see i have the at one point i will have the frame i can also on the bottom i can always he's the training partner i'm doing the thing i can tell him that wait 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 like assume this grip or wait 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 go a bit slower i think i have my frame now don't strip it straight away I want to go, or, or kind of maybe he grabbed my throat here. It's like, okay, I messed up here. I realized I messed up with my head position, but still I kind of want to try. So I will go and he will like match my speed. I will go slow, he will match my speed. I will catch the leg and now maybe he will sprawl. I, I will tell you, okay, sprawl. And what I don't know is that which way he's gonna assume the uh, front headlock. Can be this way, can be the other way. And also, I need to feel on the go which way I'm gonna go now. And my first try would be to go front, uh, like sit out on this side because my head is on this side. So I might do this. Whoop, if he moves, I will assume this and I will drag and move out to this side. So go slow, succeed on the first, second or third try. Uh, so as a training partner, you want to enable them at least on the third try. If you go more, it will become unrealistic because in jiu-jitsu we see that, yes, you have your chains of movement, but usually you, you don't do like more than a three move combo, then something else happens and the flow gets broken, like in, in actual competition. So, so if you're enabling your training partner, have them succeed either on the first, second or third go, and they don't know on which go you enable them, okay? Am I making sense about training that? So kind of a scenario-specific scramble training, okay? And you might end up in front headlock, but you might end up with a leg and coming out, so don't be limited to front headlock only. Your goal is to remember that frames, higher being wins, uh, lift their legs, high ankles win scrambles, right? And um, uh, and put their weight on their hands. So do these things after preach it and see how the escape actually unfolds. Okay? Cooperative drill, switch on your own, ready, set, go. Who wants to clap? Taps. So, one final question, if anybody wants to. So keep in mind, you, you do your survival stuff, uh, you try to free the hip, it's mostly hip, 
In all positions, it's going to be to the shoulders that you need to free and move the shoulders. Back position, for example, you might choose whether you free the shoulders first or hip first, like when you're doing full back defense, uh, depending on his attack. But in general, you want to have a frame in place so you can free one area first. Think about becoming the higher being. Think about uh, if you can lift their legs. There can be old positions, for example, from back position, it can be you kind of sit away and pull their hook up so they can't reach you, for example. Uh, like these types of situations. Think about the principles. You, you become the higher being, then you start to use the weight. You lift their legs and you force their weight onto their hands. Uh, and obviously, in all positions or in general, you might be okay surviving, exposing your back, uh, but usually you want to face them eventually. So, so you can run away from your problems and it's effective to a certain degree, but in the end you won't be able to face them, right? And that's the note what we're gonna end on. Okay, <laughs> thanks for coming. I'm staying here for the open mat so you can pick me to ask questions or whatever. Um, I probably will leave tonight, so this is the last hour to, to still talk to me in the format of this camp. If needed, reach out in the Twitters, Instagrams, whatever. Uh, and I might come down to Saturday, maybe not, and uh, I'll see you around in the internet or in the next camps. Thanks.